exploring the gardens, contemplate the sculptures. Euclid would not approve of their impossible angles. A puzzle for the eyes. The sculptures of Paranesi follow no law but chaos. The chipped marble juts in and around itself, its polyhedrons offering no perceptible start and or often middle either. Fascinating. You could stare at them for hours. In fact, you do. Bronzewood is a bargain. Well, I'm almost full of stuff, so I'm gonna wait to see if I get anything from what I do in here. In the cottage. Have I not turned my port report in from Paranesi? Where do I get a port report? Hmm. Well, let's choose somebody new as my guide. Gallant Reformer, Dunn, Glib. I just realized. Gray, Glib. Huh. Everybody's name, their first name starts with a G. Gallant, Glistening, Gray, Glib. And the second part of their name ends the same. It ends in former, form. They all end in. And then former. Re former, D former, con former, per former. Hmm. Is that because they all used to be something else? Did they also go to Paranesi? Entombed in it? Let's go with the glistening deformer. His hood hides the worst of him. A knotted, multi-jointed limb unwinds from the glistening deformer's sleeve. With surprising dexterity, he plucks an iron lamp from a high shelf. Follow me, he commands. You follow him out of the cottage, up the gravel path, to the doorstep of Paranesi. Footprints are worn into the stone. He has no key. He unfurls a notched, scabbed finger from his unpleasant limb and slides into the keyhole. The door opens with a click and you follow the deformer into the dark. Deeper into Paranesi, the deformer takes down his hood. Tangled flesh recoils in the cold air. He has eyes in all the wrong places. A dozen, a dozen different varieties of mouth gulp in unison. Better. Tension has drained from his voice. Welcome to the Warrens. You descend into a brick-walled pit larger than a quarry. At the center stands a colossal column honeycombed with tunnels, the holes so small you couldn't squeeze an arm inside. One gaunt prisoner sits atop a spiked wheel, casually aiming a rifle at the deformer's head. Oh, this is where we get a poor report, down here. <clears throat> a dozen mouths grin. I always relish the opportunity to talk about myself. Now that his hood is down, you're struck by the deformer's newfound ease of manner. He circles the central column with you, eagerly telling you about the progress of his favorite prisoners, the ones who have crawled through the warrens five or six or seven times. His words are underscored by the shrieks and faint, meaty squelching echoing from the narrow tunnels. He points out particularly hideous specimens, ones with slugs for limbs or fleshless heads, all with the pride of a doting grandparent. I can follow the deformer, insist that the rifleman lower his gun, quietly encourage the rifleman to shoot the deformer, <laughs> that would be fucked up, or just leave. I, I figured the deformer would probably appreciate it if I insist that the rifleman lower his gun. It wouldn't do to have your chaplain's head blown off this early into a tour. The Pragmatic Vigilante. The rifle-wielding vigilante is a gaunt fellow, eyes deep-set and gleaming, cheekbones sharp as cut glass. His curly hair would sit much better on a fuller, healthier face. On hearing your protest, he pulls the trigger a few times, generating a chorus of unassuming clicks. Ain't loaded. Burned through my ammunition long ago. Except this. He points at a bullet hung around his neck on a length of string. Saving it for... 
uh, a rainy day. You notice the deformer gazing thoughtfully in your direction with at least three of his eyes. Perhaps he appreciates your intervention on his behalf, however unnecessary. Wait, what does that say? Gis? Gis a hand? Are they trying to say, like, give us? Give us a hand? He says. I need to change if I'm to escape this place, right? But I'm a stubborn fella. Not one much prone to introspection if you catch me drift. Oh. Catch me drift. Okay, yeah, this is supposed to be read kind of with a certain accent. <clears throat> he gestures hopelessly at the Warrens. I need to have a shape in mind as I crawl through, or else I'll just be squished to mush. Any suggestions? Hmm. Oh god, you can bring moments of inspiration to help the vigilante think of his new form. No, I can't. I'm keeping all my moments of inspiration. Encourage him to find another way to change. Changing his shape might not prove enough for Paranesi. Changing shape doesn't bother me none, but I tell you now, I won't change my mind. I'll be here if you change yours. <laughs> Vigilante has altered himself further. Oh, what is this? Convince the Vigilante to abandon his physical transformation. Um, hmm. I mean, he uses mirrors. That's, man. I have, was it, 77 mirrors? And it's only a 52% chance of success. Let's try it. An outward change isn't enough. He should abandon his grudges and his enemies. Yes. Paranesi demands something fundamental. The vigilante must abandon his plans and his principles. He's silent for a long while. Yes. I suppose you're right, he says finally. He sits like something broken. In that case, I shall be here forever. I'll have no need for this any longer. Like a magician, he extricates a folded map from a secret compartment in his sleeve. It's a chart of murdered stars. Ooh. That's very helpful, thank you. And one last thing. I can tell you the first rule of Paranesi. Don't look back. Don't look back. I should write that down. Yeah, let's put it in general notes. Um, rules of Paranesi. First. Oh, well, that one looks kind of like an eye, doesn't it? I'll just say one. Don't look back. Follow the deformer. The deformer has uh, stumped off to address a cluster of prisoners clinging to the central column. Haggard prisoners cluster on ledges like gargoyles, clinging by fingertips and tailbones. Most still look human. The Warrens are your salvation, says the deformer. Become glorious like me. Majesty and monstrosity. Beauty and abomination. One shivering wretch hops down. A volunteer? Asks the deformer in delight, nudging him towards a tunnel far narrower than he is. But on seeing the tunnel, the would-be volunteer changes his mind and backs away. Hmm, persuade the prisoner to enter. 24% chance of success. <laughs> Convince the prisoner to stay out of the tunnel. 78% chance of success. Let's do that one. Whatever the deformer might believe, physical change isn't enough to escape Paranesi. Wow, I lost deference to the deformer. They didn't like that. I mean, fair. 
your words strike a chord. Take this, says the volunteer, fishing a gold locket from beneath his shirt. A relic from my old life. I probably need to let go of it if I'm to escape here. You may as well have it. I think you saved me from making a terrible mistake. He hurries away, and the other prisoners follow. You may think me terrible, but a change to the body is easier to bear than a change to the soul, says the deformer behind you. I am trying to spare these people from the worst of what Paranesi could do to them. Yeah, I don't know if I'm helping or hurting anything when I do this. Like, change your shape, don't change your shape, change your mind. I don't know. Well, I guess overall I didn't really make any progress with the Deformer. But I did some other stuff. Leave Paranesi. Um, as you leave the Warrens, the Deformer sighs and raises his hood. He says nothing more for a long time. So I can take one more tour. Now you've left the confines of Paranesi, the sky seems dizzyingly wide. The deformer stumps back to his cottage, squelching with every footstep. Well, let's see the last one we haven't done, the gray conformer. Gray hair, gray eyes, and a gray expression. More cement than steel. To remind you this, uh, this is your last tour of the day. Very well. With marionette precision, she puts aside her tea and fetches an iron lamp from a high shelf. I will guide you to the best of my ability. You follow her out of the cottage, up the gravel path, to the doorstep of Paranesi. She takes an ornate silver key from her pocket, and when the door is unlocked, she holds it open for you. It's so interesting and funny that everybody has a different way of opening the door. Right? One, I... I think one knocked on the door and it just opened. I think the glib performer like yelled for it to open and it did. The last person used their appendages as a key and this person uses a literal key. You follow the conformer down staircase after winding staircase, finally reaching a maze of flooded tunnels. The walls bristle with fierce black mold. The water is opaque. You can't see your feet. Here, the most deeply condemned wallow, says the conformer. Like this servitor. Too inflexible to change on its own. A twig-limbed creature slumps in the corner, raising its head only fractionally at her words. She waits past it without a second glance. Let's approach the brittle servitor. Its face, or mask, is expressionless porcelain. Its lamp is shackled to limbs that are twisted and blackened like burnt wood. Oh, God. Even as you step closer, you cannot tell if it's wearing a mask or if its face is made of porcelain. Luminous eels swim around its feet, but they vanish when you look at them directly. The lesser being has come to offer obeisance. Its voice issues from a clay urn slung across its back. Its words are the thudding echo of a stone bell. Or perhaps to marvel at the disgrace of its superior. Is it being an asshole to me? What the hell? This servitor lacks the malleability to escape the aberrant twin's prison. Will the lesser being assist its superior? Why do you keep calling me a lesser being? Fuck you. Hmm. I'm going to refuse to help him. It needs to work on its people skills. <clears throat> Outrage. The servitor doesn't move, but shadows dance angrily on the wall behind it. You are entombed in a casket miles beneath the soil. You have always been buried here. You had no life, only a death. You scrabble uselessly at a stone lid. Uh, at the stone lid, clawing broken fingers down familiar grooves. The conformer clicks her tongue and you find yourself back in Paranesi, if you ever left. 
the servitor has turned its expressionless face sulkily to the wall. Should I actually try to help it? Hmm. Okay, let's go back. The reward for freeing something so ancient and puissant should make its arrogance bearable. The lesser being will travel to the House of Rods and Chains, says the brittle servitor. It will petition the aberrant twin through its intermediary in the belfry. It will demand the servitor's freedom and a recompense for two centuries of inconvenience. Okay. Eavesdrop on the conformer's questions. She has cornered some shivering prisoners and is interrogating them with a precision and patience more unnerving than any rage. When did you last feel anger, regret, grief? Why were you condemned? What did you do wrong? Would you prefer to forget? She listens to each answer with the barest hint of revulsion. As the prisoners pour out their hearts, they start to look puzzled. Most fall silent. Some try to keep going, talking circular nonsense. They seem to be forgetting their stories as they speak them. When the prisoners finally trail off in confusion, she delivers her advice. Shuck your memories, abandon emotions, vacate your soul. Seems to be it for this one. Leave. My business here is concluded. The conformer does not quite smile. The conformer marches silently up an endless spiraling stairway, not looking back to see if you're at her heels. A conformer wishes you well in her leaden voice and returns to the cottage. Okay, that is it. Buy as much of the bronze wood as I can. And I think it's time I head back to Pan. Yeah, but as always, well, as as sometimes, <laughs> let's head back to Pan through a new direction. So before we just kind of went straight-ish, let's go more just like down. Let's just go south and then east, I guess. Morales strained and someone has been careless. One of the barrels in your hold wasn't securely fastened. Uh, um, just throw out the barrel full, that's fine. Recover sheaves of parchment. Ah, a moment of inspiration, yes! Thank you. 
Thanks, buddy. Found two things. Yeah, I think the intrepid Cavi could not find more than one, I think. I don't think I ever found more than one thing. But the Ratronaut can find three. Ah, I can't do that. Can't I say? It's always weird how the sounds just suddenly change. They call this the Dementine Reach, Crew Woman observes. Bodes well. Your Ratronaut returns your crew cheer, knocking back a thimble full of whiskey. It delivers its report. things over here, remember, this is the place where we saw a lot of curators. Those might be eggs. And eggs are worth a lot of Eleutherian mysteries, which are worth a lot of inspiration. I think it's actually worth going back there. That'd be a very quick way of getting Eleutherian mysteries. I think it's six mysteries per egg, which is almost a moment of inspiration. Two eggs equal a moment, a moment and a half a moment of inspiration. How often the eggs respawn? Also, my terror is super high. But if I kill some curators, that will reduce my terror by a lot, actually. Did a lot of damage right there. Almost dead. Come on, come on. I think it's trying to run for me. Ah. Take a trophy from 72% tear down to 47. Nice. Can't help but feel like an asshole doing this. I'm taking their eggs and then killing them. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty fucked up, isn't it? Oh, it's a crossroads. Yeah, I don't want to be in debt to them. Is there anything else I can do here? What's this one's name? Mistress Green. Uh, I don't remember which one it was that lunged at me. Even for an Eleutherian mystery and a moment of inspiration, it's not worth it, given how expensive it is to repay. Nope, fuck off. The figure withdraws its extended mandible and disappears behind the crossroad post. Oh, my terror went down. 
Hold on, I want to see if there's any other things in this area. Maybe more eggs. That could be one. Just another crossroads. Well, I'll get some terror reduction. Back down here. Let's go down to this one. Go for this one down here. Hermitage? Yeah. Just observe. Right? Actually, three savage secrets for a condemned experiment and an Eleutherian mystery? Yeah. And a lot of terror? Yeah. Whoa, just discovered three things. Okay, let's get two of them. The ones around Pan. Whoa. Is that it? No, that, I mean, those don't get marked on the map. Maybe there's clotted night there? Uh-oh. 
This is fine. Oh, the Hour of the Wolf, too. Endure. Um, Success, wow. in the blast for that. should tear off a trophy, substantially reduce terror. Ooh, failure. Ah, this will grant a moment of inspiration, but failure would substantially increase my terror, which I cannot take. I have 82%, unfortunately. I'm only a 21% chance of succeeding. Uh, tear off a trophy. Ooh, that was really good. Shit. Ah. Burn the remains. Down to 38%. Manageable. Alright, that was fun. Didn't expect such hard enemies so close to Pan. Back at Pan. So I've already... Um, taking care of all the basic business, turned in port reports, sold the egg for Eleutherian Mysteries, etc, etc. And then I also went over to December, uh, the Winters Reside, and got two moments of inspiration, the most I can get. So now I've got three moments of inspiration. And with that, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode, and when I return, I think it's finally time that we go back to Langley Hall.